It turns out that 25 man in Black Winkler is objectively the most efficient way to get loot. And that's a conclusion we came over after trying to do the POG with the community raid ourselves. Because if I am quite frank, I am just looking for the easiest way to clear Black Winkler. And I think over time we're gonna come up to this meta very easily. In this video, I will not only propose to you that 25 man Black Winkler is the best way to get loot, I will also propose to you that it is the most vanilla classic, the most proper purity of the game way to do it for many reasons. The first reason and perhaps the most important one is that it is a lot easier. Running triafix black winkler it is astronomically easier to do than running zero affix 20 man black winkler. And that is because of the raid design, that is necessarily not something that you would see in other raids, uh, for example Molten Core. Having five extra people doesn't make it a lot easier, but Black Winkler is different. If you take a look at the pogs of Black Winkler, right, like what are the bosses that people have troubles with? Uh, number one in the list, of course, is gonna be Bellstrass the Guildbreaker. The gimmick on Bellstrass is that there is a dot on the tank that keeps ramping up and eventually the tank dies and uh, the other tank has to pick it up and it is a little bit of chaos, there's people dying, the whole shebang right? Five extra people in Bellstrass means the boss dies before you gotta do a tank swap and that gets rid of the mechanic essentially. Not only that, having extra healers means that you have uh, the tank up for a little longer, especially if you got Pain Suppression or Varg Skin, like one extra Varg Skin, probably means you get 20 more seconds of tanking before you die, so that means the enraged timer itself, quote unquote, is gonna be shorter. We're gonna talk about the composition I recommend after this, of course, but if you do it this way, Bellstrass is pretty much a joke. Of course, another problem with Black Winkler is the suppression room, because if you wipe in the suppression room, it's gonna take you 20 freaking minutes to do it again. Same with Broodlord uh, Lash Layer, that's the guy that you gotta kill to stop the suppression room. It is super annoying, but five more people means five more people to split the damage over, five more people to kill the things faster, and if you kill everything fast and you keep moving, the suppression room is really, really easy, even if you are not doing the traps correctly, which people in Pogs seldom do. It is a little bit of a pain in the butt, I'm not gonna lie. The best part about taking extra people to the suppression room is that if you gotta leave somebody behind because they die in an awkward spot, well YOLO, it doesn't really matter, just let them rot there and you still got enough people to kill the boss and they are gonna get the loot anyway, all they gotta do is not release. Of course, five people are gonna make it so every trash pool, not only the suppression room, you can do them much, much faster and trash is very well, depending on how many times you got, you're in the boss, you, you know, if you don't wipe. That is easily at least 40% of the raid and 40% of the raid being faster is also uh, a lot more bang for your buck so to speak. This whole thing also opens for a lot more flexibility and a more balanced comp because even if your composition is not very good if you got enough people in it you can kind of make it work. It's a lot harder to get every buff when you only got 20 people than when you got 25 people not to mention the social aspect of it that maybe you got a guy that is not very good at the game and you want to bring him in to carry him because he's your friend and you like him or whatever the hell you can do that. And that was something that he couldn't quite do in Molten Core, right? Like, taking one person that's bad out of 19, uh, it was a big deal, especially with the hit mechanic, which is no longer present, thank freaking god. If you are willing to do this 25 men, Black Winkler is the most casual raid we had in a long, long time, and I think that reflects on the numbers. We're gonna talk about the numbers probably tomorrow, that's another video I wanna make. But it is very encouraging overall. I know there has been stupid stuff with Black Winkler, how come we still do not have portals after we wipe on a boss or something to go back to the boss, uh, Agra and get to freaking work, like we, we've been saying this for a while, just put them in the game. But aside from that, yeah, I mean, Black Winkler is definitely a lot better in my opinion as an experience than Molten Core. There is, however, one drawback, not for me, but there is one drawback, and this goes once again to the spirit of Vanilla. 25 men Black Winkler means no logs. They will take them, they do like some sort of mathematical equation where they nerf your logs to like nothing. So it shows up that you kill the boss, but it's a great parse even if you do insane damage. I don't know exactly the measure that they took to do that in Black Queen Lair, but essentially logs do not exist for you if you are doing 25 man Black Queen Lair. So you got an amazing excuse to not worry about it, and I think that's a plus for me. I know people love their parses, and a lot of people are not gonna be too happy about that. Fine. If you wanna get your 99s, you cannot do the 25 
Spotify Man Black Queen Lair, you can, you can go back to a raid and, and get the French people to yell at you if you enjoy that kind of raiding. I mean, there's something for everybody in this tier. That, that's not me. I, I don't want to have French people yell at me. But of course, the cost that you got for running 25 people and the point of this video is that yes, you got 5 more people. That is 25% less items per person. Let's talk about the loot and why that's not a big deal as you might think. I will be as conservative as possible to my case to make it look as weak as possible so you can see that even in the worst case scenario it is still worth it. Every boss in Black Wingler has a random chance to drop you either 3 or 4 items. So that means if we are to take the, the worst comparison for my case, we're gonna assume that they all drop 4. There is an amazing guide, I will drop it on the description for you guys, it explains every mechanic in Black Wingler. I am a huge fan of this guide, I think it's by far the best you can get at this point. But here is the explanation for how the affixes work and the loot, that's the important part. Essentially, if you get three affixes, you get one chest with five items. If your affix uh, also is the weekly bonus, you know, every week there is one random affix that is the best because you get the bonus loot from that one, uh, that's gonna be included in the three affixes. You're also gonna get a chest with four items, and also if you do the weekly bonus on its own, there is another chest with two more items. So in total, you can get extra 11 items for doing the affixes. If you look at the affixes really quick, the three easiest affixes you can do and they barely do anything, that's gonna be the blue where you get a stack when somebody is about to blow up. It is supported by uh, DBM all the affixes now, which is really, really cool. There's also the green one where you drop poison and you gotta move out to the poison. Super easy, doesn't even hurt that much. And the bronze one, you get slowed or sped up a little bit every time. They nerfed it to hell from the PTR, so it barely does anything now. Those are the three easiest, okay? The red one is a little scary, which is if you get damage, uh, sometimes you get a debuff that you gotta get healed to 100% HP or you get a dot. Uh, that's definitely one of the hardest and the other one is the black one that enables mechanics on every fight and that's kind of annoying. You gotta learn every mechanic for every fight. So maybe I would say that if the black is the bonus affix, maybe it is not worth doing the bonus affix that week uh, if you're not very interested in tryharding because that's definitely gonna be super annoying. But otherwise... For every other affix, uh, having five more people will override most of the problems, right? If you got extra healers, the red one is not going to be a problem, nor the green one. The bronze one doesn't do anything really. And the blue one becomes easier because all you got to do is stack. So you got more people to stack with and split the damage. So if you try to do a raid the intended way with 20 people and you're doing it with no affixes because you want it to be easier, not only is going to be a lot harder than 25 man in it, it is going to be a lot, lot harder, but you are also going to get less loot per person. Let me show you the map. In 8 bosses, assuming the best case scenario, which is the worst case scenario for the affix scenario, you get 4 items per boss. There is 8 bosses in Blackwing Lair. That is 32 items in total in all of Blackwing Lair. Very well. 32 divided by 20 is 1.6 items per person. Also remember, we got tier tokens now, so you get like 3 potential classes that can take every item, and that means there is very little loot that actually goes to waste at any given uh, pool, but for the scenario where we are 25 manning with 3 affixes, we got 32 the baseline plus 11 extra items, right? That is 43 items in total. Of course there is more people and you gotta spread it more, but even still if you divide it by 25 people, you are getting 1.7 items per person. That is still more loot. And once again, this is the least uh, generous scenario because let's assume, for example, on half the bosses you get three items and on half the bosses you get uh, four items, like a, a mediocre kind of loot day. You get three items on four bosses and then you get four items on uh, four bosses. That is 28 items total. If you divide it by 20, that is 1.4. But if you get the same lock of the 28 items, because you get half of them are 3 items and half of them are 4 items, but then we add 11 items from the affixes and then we divide it by 25 because we got 5 more people, that is actually 1.56 compared to the 1.4 you would get otherwise. So th as you can see, the gap keeps widening a little bit. The affixes become more valuable the less lucky you get. So yes, if you are a tryhard, if you are a, a super good guild and you can clear three affixes very easily on 20 people, that's definitely what you gotta do. That's the best of both worlds. However, if you are not a tryhard, if you are not very good, if your guild is not very good, or if you don't wanna invest four hours into figuring out Blackwing Lair and you just wanna brute force it, get rid of it, 
very quickly, especially if you are a, a pog, especially if you like pogging Black Queen Lair, I simply do not see no reason not to do this. Splitting the items between five more people in exchange for getting 11 more items and being guaranteed to clear at a reasonable time or clearing at all in some cases will always be worth it for me. And that's what I'm gonna be doing for the rest of the tier and I celebrate it. This is what the difficulty system should have always been for Molten Core. This is the least retail feeling a raid out of all of Sod. And that's funny because this is when we got the most abilities and the most changes, but this feels the most classic it's ever felt in a while. Let me talk really quick about the composition I recommend you guys to take to this 25 man Black Queen Lair. And this will make it a lot easier to deal with the entire freaking raid as a whole. You're gonna see how this composition makes everything a little easier. First of all, we're gonna need a main tank. It can be almost any tank, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna go for a prot warrior because I am a prot warrior and I gotta recommend myself. If I cannot recommend myself, who am I gonna recommend? And the other tank, very important here, it can't be a druid and it can't be a warrior. One of the tanks cannot be one of those classes and the reason for that is that druids and warriors are very good in the rest of the raid but in Nefarian they will get destroyed by the class call. They, they are a huge liability and a problem. You can survive it but it is still a pain in the ass to do so. You gotta coordinate cooldowns. It is, it is annoying and it is not worth it. So you can take something like a warlock tank. You can take something like a shaman tank. You can take a paladin tank. You, tank, you can take a rogue tank. Whatever you feel like. I play horde so let's assume we're horde. Uh, uh, we can interchange change shamans with uh, paladins as much as you want, it doesn't change much. These two are gonna be our tanks, the shaman is gonna tank Nefarian, the warrior is gonna be very handy for the rest. Then you wanna get somebody that can off spec as a DPS, that's also not, necess not mandatory, that's not something you need, but if you got 25 people, getting an extra tank for the trash helps a quadrillion lot, so if you can get a DPS that can flex as a tank, for example, another warrior or a rogue, that would be really neat. That's basically for the trash, there is no mechanic or fight where having three tanks is important, I think the three tank strategy on Ebon Rock and Flame God is absolute tier garbage, so yeah, uh, that, that's a cook strat, we're not gonna do that strat. The that strat is worse and harder to do than the, the try hard strat. So we're gonna do only two tanks. The third tank is only for trash, basically, to make it a little easier. And then we're gonna go for at least five healers. We're gonna take at least one Restoration Druid, that's gonna be for Bark Skin. We're gonna take at least one Discipline Priest, that's gonna be for uh, Pain Suppression, very important. We can take a Healer Mage if we want, we can take a, a Healer Shaman, a Healer Paladin, it doesn't really matter the other two, close enough to me. Then of course we wanna get at least two Hunters, because Tranquilizing Shot is an important mechanic on Flame Gore and Ebon Rock, and it is also a mechanic in Chromagus. You need at least one, you can do the raid with only one, but I recommend at least two. We're gonna take two Hunters, in the DPS group and the rest you want to get a nice assortment of, of DPSers. For the most part uh, the fights are not that um, hard for melees to deal with. This is, it is not a, a melee terrible raid like a lot of other tiers but if you get a lot of melee that becomes a problem for fire mo. Of course one of them that you gotta get absolutely is a feral druid. They give 1% free hit and they give the wins, uh, wild strikes for everybody. That's a wind fury so we're definitely gonna get a feral druid. Uh, we are also gonna try to get a boom king to buff the casters we're also gonna try to get elemental shamans and the enhancement shamans whether you can get to get a totem for every group like this there we go if you are alliance three paladins is pretty much the same thing that's what you should shoot for four paladins is also acceptable but three paladins is the good number and we're gonna fill the rest with pumpers we want to get at least one warlock so he can summon you can go fire now that's a, a, a new thing you can do we can get a fire mage and we probably want to get one shadow priest or two would be even better so we can get one for the healers and one for the casters and we're gonna fill everything else with daima dozen melees they are pretty easy to find we want to get a rogue or two so they help with the suppression chamber that's pretty much it they got interrupts they are kind of useful they do a lot of damage so they are always good to have we're gonna get a couple warriors not too many because they steal my gear and you can fill these three last spots with whatever you want to get whatever you can find at that point is pretty much fine probably if you were to ask me i would stack maybe a couple more mages or warlocks because they do a lot of damage and they are pretty useful but that part is up to you it doesn't really matter the last three those are the crucial parts that we already went
went over. What this is going to do is that you're gonna have pretty much guaranteed tank healing, you're never gonna have problems with healing ever again, and you still got way more damage than a normal 20 men, and you got all the buffs that you need. And as I told you, there is three spots that can pick up the slack, or actually more accurately, that are gonna be slack to pick up because you can pick up the slack now, and that means you got a lot more room to take a friend that sucks. If you got wanna carry a friend into the game or something like that, this is probably the best tier to do it. Also, if you're interested in raiding with us, we got a Discord, I'm gonna link it in the description. Uh, you can sign up in community raids. We do it every Saturday at 4 p.m. EST, and we always need some gosh darn warlocks. Warlocks and hunters, I don't know why, I cannot find any lately. Subscribe, join the Discord, and thank you for watching!